Hello there, right here guys, we have a lot to go over today. I did a whole bunch of in-depth testing to do with the mangrove blocks, as well as the new mud stuff. I discovered a lot of interesting things which I will be sharing with you guys. Then at the end of the video, we'll be looking at some of my farms I designed months ago to see if they actually produce stuff like mud, clay, frog lights, as well as mangrove parts. Leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future things that I find out about 1.19. We're getting ever closer to 350,000 subscribers. So let's test if these blocks can be pushed by a piston. You can see that the leaves as well as the sapling got destroyed. So just like soul sand, even though the mud is slightly lower than a full block, because the mud block appears to reach the full 1 meter tall block, mobs are still able to spawn on top of it. Mud bricks can be collected with a pickaxe. Shovels work on the mud. Hoe doesn't work on leaves. And currently, silk touch doesn't even work on the leaves. Axe work on the proper cue. Axe also works on the mangrove roots. But when it comes to the mudded ones, the proper tool is the shovel. And then axe works on all the other types of mangrove stuff. So I have a mega fortune axe here. And let's go ahead and break some leaves and see if it drops anything. Doesn't appear so. And let's try it on this guy. And we just get the item back. So this is just instant mine with the fist. Most of these blocks can be obtained as items just by using the fist. The frog lights in survival are instant break. So trying to place this new sapling into a flower pot actually does work. It looks pretty cool too. It does appear that the mangrove logs as well as wood types all are burnable except for the ones that aren't typically burnable like the doors and these little things here. Roots also burn as well as the leaves. Uh, the proper cool didn't as well as the mud variations of the roots. So let's go ahead and try to put these new blocks into the composter. Doesn't seem like the leaves go in there. The Propagules do, and none of the mud stuff does. Propagules can be used for fuel, as well as the roots and the mangrove wood types, but the leaves currently don't work. You can put the mud bricks inside of the stone cutters, and it lets you get cheaper amounts of stairs. The roots can actually be waterlogged, in which case they kind of contain the water. It doesn't look like it flows out at all. So we go ahead and place lava beside it. It does instantly turn into obsidian. So you could use this to actually make a cobblestone generator while having the water completely contained in from all sides. Since the roots can be waterlogged and they can be moved, you should be able to move water, but as you can see, it actually makes it vanish. Go ahead and one tick it, and it looks like that actually does work. This mechanic is very useful in my fly machines that produce like infinite cobble roads or stone roads. Now typically things that can be waterlogged, they have water sources on either side of them. They will become waterlogged themselves, but this doesn't apply to the mangrove roots. But it's kind of nice to have some blocks that have unique properties. So it looks like leaves aren't solid as well as roots, but the mud roots are. Yet we're still able to place redstone dust on top of them. Kind of like glass. Now roots are like leaves when it comes to how they diminish light. Blowing up the waterlog block of the root does nothing. Despite the water not leaving the waterlog root, if you place a water beside it, the flowing water will actually connect with it and actually cause this water here to push the opposite direction. I'm pretty sure this is a bug. Despite the sapling being able to be waterlogged, you can't directly place water onto it, otherwise it just breaks off. You can use a debug stick to actually flip these proper ghoul upside down, so these are like the ones that come off of the trees. But they don't seem to produce any light. And these upside down ones can have leaves attached to them. Let's go ahead and just bone mill this little one as it grows bigger, and it seems like nothing happens after it gets to this stage. And I break it, it just drops as the item type. Propagule will naturally grow underneath the leaves that aren't placed by the player and eventually get updated and popping off. You can speed up this natural event just by bone milling the leaves and this will produce them underneath of there. And with a simple setup like this with two dispensers, one pointing into the leaf, causing it to produce the propagule and another dispenser making this one grow up, you can create yourself a very simple and easy propagule farm. Once you break it off, they just get picked up by this hopper. Now, I'm not sure if these guys are supposed to just get stuck like this and end up floating. Since the proper ghouls can be planted underground as well as bone mill, they can actually grow into a tree from underneath of the water. Now, one of the properties of these proper ghouls that they're supposed to have like in real life is they fall out of the mangrove trees and then they can land on the ground and get washed about and eventually grow up into something. But currently, they don't have those properties in the game, but if you do summon in a proper ghoul that is like a falling block, essentially like a sand, when it does hit the ground, it does just snap and go ahead and plant itself. You can also do this when it lands into the water, and this might be a cool mechanic they can add in. Essentially like a automatically replanting sapling. If you have any other questions about the mangrove stuff, tell me in the comments. So blowing up mud, it's actually pretty weak to blast. 
Here goes packed mud, and it's actually pretty blast resistant. And mud bricks are also resistant. Mud roots are pretty weak, but the leaves are weaker. The roots themselves are also fairly weak. Now despite the new mangrove forests have their entire floors made out of the new mud blocks, currently moss blocks don't actually convert it over into moss. But it probably will since it is like a natural block. Same thing goes for the skulk block. Piggy's playing in the mud. Now throw ball potions don't work on the dirt nor does lingering but you can just right click it with those type of bottles and it will also convert it. And when you do use these they will give you back a normal glass bottle and other types of water like potions like the thick potion don't actually work. So let's try converting the other types of dirt into mud. So of course it works on that one. It also works on coarse dirt, works on rooted dirt, and does not work on the others. If there's anything else you want me to test to do with the mud stuff, let me know. So I'm here at my mud and clay farm to be. Currently it's a Zele tree farm. It does rooted dirt. It also do grass blocks and mycelium and much other things including like stone, cobble bone meal and endermen and pearls but the main thing that this thing is supposed to do in 1.19 is it's supposed to convert the dirt that I have being produced over here and then convert it into mud then have the mud dry out and be converted into clay blocks meaning it could be a mud farm or a clay block farm. Both of them can be picked up by endermen and that's what I'm using to collect these items. Now, I actually designed this farm five months ago before we even knew it would be possible to automate the process of turning dirt into mud and I just guessed that they would use dispensers and water bottles and it turns out that's exactly what they did and that's exactly how I designed this farm up. But currently it doesn't look like the dripstone drying mechanic is in the game yet so it can produce mud but it won't produce the dried out version which is the clay. The way my automatic mud farm works is it all starts over here at this stone generator. The stone is then pushed into the center here where it's converted into moss. This is done using dispensers and pistons. Then azalea is planted on top that is automatically grown into an azalea tree. And when this happened, notice that the moss block is then converted into a rooted dirt. Now for my dirt version of this or grass block or mycelium, I would have the player AFKing with a hoe or spade to convert this into dirt. But since rooted dirt can even be converted into mud, this machine is infinitely automatic without a player. So the rooted dirt is then pushed into the system where I have a dispenser that is automatically dispensing a water bottle onto it then converts it into mud and pushes it downwards. You can see if we look in here, it ends up using the water which turns it back into a glass bottle. But when the next cycle occurs, it's going to fill it back up again and then use it again which will make it convert into mud and then go empty again and it repeats this cycle. The mud is then pushed down into two different lanes, one lane over here and one lane up here. And both these lanes are pushed over near my miniature enderman farm. You can collect the items with a player or using explosives, but since enderman can pick up the mud itself, all you have to do is have a player somewhere nearby and the enderman will fall down here. They'll then be mad at the endermite and have a chance to pick up the blocks that are near them. Notice that this guy just picked up one of the mud blocks and he's holding it currently in his hand. Then I have the endermen fall to their death where they will drop any items that they're holding including the mud blocks. Then you just put down some hoppers underneath and put all their items into your storage collection. So you can either run this farm infinitely automatic with a player with this setup here or by using this version of the farm which is playerless. I also have other 1.19 farms including this one which produces all the different types of skulk blocks as well as I got a bonus warden farm. We also got the new frogs for Java which I went ahead and updated my frog farm that I made a couple months ago and with that means that we can go ahead and get the new frog light blocks Orker, Verdant as well as Pearlescent frog light. This is done by having a mega cube spawner which you get from the bastions then the magma fall down into this powder snow. They eventually will die, bring it to the small ones. And these are where the frogs come in. They slurp them up and then they drop the new frog lights. The farm works really nice. We just have a collection system with the hopper that picks up all the loot and puts it into the chest. I have a second version for the spawner type, which uses an iron golem to sort of pull all the magma cubes into one area before having them killed by the frogs. But if you want a really fast frog light farm, then you're going to have to build my magma cube farm, which I converted into the frog light farm where these guys will spawn here in the basalt delta where the player AFK up really high so they concentrate right inside of here and all of them are attracted towards this iron golem and then they are killed off by the powder snow as well as the frogs and then all 
all the loots get collected and stored away in a hopper cart collection system. Now it seems like they added the frogs into Java Edition. They had them so they could jump much higher than Bedrock Edition. We actually had frogs that jump 7 meters high, which is like jumping 21 feet in real life. They also are much shorter so they can end up going to areas where they didn't go in Bedrock Edition. The most challenging thing about Frog Light Farm is just getting all three types of the frogs that we get all three types of the lights. Don't worry, I'll eventually do tutorials on all of my 1.19 farms once the mechanics are finalized. Now check out this playlist all about rare items and blocks in Minecraft. Or this one where I'm trying to design an automatic farm for everything in the game of Minecraft. I had a real blast playing with all this new stuff during my Twitch streams. So make sure you guys are joining my Discord community so you don't miss out on those. Hope you're all having a great day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!